boost buyouts are pretty much my arch nemesis right now. I mean, I started trying to tie with these when I first started out, and it was just impossible. I mean, I've got pretty fat fingers, but, you know, it's probably taken me this long just to pretty much figure them out. I mean, it's been probably just short of a year since I started tying, probably a bit less than that, but finally figured them out. So thought I'd do a little bit of videos for you guys pertaining to little tips and tricks and, you know, stuff I've learned about different materials and goose biots is probably the main one that kind of triggered this. So thought I'd share a little bit and in the process we'll kind of tie a basic Prince Nymph. So it's got a 14 hook and um, some big 140 thread so you guys can see a little bit better. But Now when you're tying in a tail, the thing that really helps it split out is some people use a little dubbing ball back here but I just like to use thread and it keeps things cleaned up a little bit and you know doesn't spread them out too far whereas you know, thread you get a little bit more control over the size of that ball back there than you do with dubbing. So what I'm going to do is bring my thread all the way back to where I want that ball at and you can go a little bit down the bend of the hook there because I mean, all this is is to you know spread out those biots you know they're not not there for any much more purpose than that and I'm going to spin my bobbin to the right to kind of cord up the thread. And that's just to make it a little bit more pronounced and help it stack on top of each other to build up that, that ball. You only need four or five wraps on there just to build up a little bit. And I'm just going to bring my thread right in front of that. Okay. And then when you're working with buyouts, easiest thing, these are kind of hard to see, but I'll show you on some white ones here. So easiest thing is just spread them open like that, and that'll make it easier to pick out the two that you want, and then you're going to tear them free. You can clip them off. I started clipping them off, but if you tear them off instead of clipping, it gives you a little bit more, more length to work with, and just makes it that much easier then you will get kind of these fuzzies like that and it makes it hard to slide them past each other so I do like to clip those off and it seems kind of redundant we just pulled it off and then you go and break out the scissors again but you know it it does help a little bit if you pull them off instead of clipping them and because it's really hard to get your scissors down in there and you know so then all I'm going to do is open them up like that face them back to back and then now I've got them in my hand like that and then you can kind of slide them past each other and then once you get the length that you want once those are two are matched up then I'll come in with my other hand, kind of grip down on that, and then line these up side to side so you know you don't have one sticking way up past the other one, and then I'll make it harder to tie in. So once you got those set up the way that you want, I'm just going to go in from on top and then split the difference with those biots. And then measure out where I want my tail. Most of these tails, you know, you don't want them too long. Just a little bit will do. Okay, and then I'm going to measure them and then pinch them down as hard as I can back right on that ball. I mean, you don't want to get too far up here because then you're going to be losing a lot of that, you know, area where you can tie it in. Okay. So you want to pinch that down really, really tight because you don't want these spinning around either because you want them nice and flat and looking good. 
So what I'm going to do is really loosely take my thread around and instead of pulling up or down I'm going to pull straight out to the side and that'll again that'll help keep it from spinning around the hook and you always do get a little bit but normally you can kind of clean that up back here when you're putting in your wraps okay and then just gonna bring that forward clean that up and you can see it's pretty decent looking tail right there and you know not a lot of science behind it just really don't want that thread thread torque pulling those biots around and I'll show you again. The key is, and I'm sure you guys can get it with pulling up and down on thread, but for me it's always been easier if I pull off to the side, you know, going forward instead of um, up or down. I don't know why that is. Probably just the way that the thread torque works out and cancels itself out or something, but it really does help. I mean, this is really important to just take your time when you're first starting out. I mean, there's no reason in putting something on a hook if you're not happy with it. So just take your time and get it down to where you feel that you're doing pretty good on every one. And then, you know, the speed will, you know, come up to you. And before you know it, you're going to be tying pretty good flies with biots pretty quick so you know don't worry so again I've just got these lined up and you know kind of play around with them a little bit and get them just perfect just the way that you want and I'm going to slide it down on top measure out the length that I want pinch it tight really hard back here and then it helps if you do put a little uh, clockwise spin into your bobbin there and then really light come up and around really light and then pull straight off to the side and then just clean that up this 140 isn't perfect for tying in biots I normally like to stick with 8 aughts and you know, 70 if I have to use a flat thread, but see, it's really not hard to do. It just takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience, and you know, it's something that you know, like I said, definitely need to practice, and it'll come with time. I mean, I've always, always, always hated tying with buyouts and. You know, it's just a matter of making myself do it after a while. Okay. So we have our tail down and, you know, we put in our body. And then now we need to put on the top wings. And this part is a little bit harder. But, again, just practice, practice. And eventually you can get it down pretty well. And this is just... You know, methods that worked out really well for me and thought I'd share for all the other fat finger people out there. Okay, so I'm just going to start my thread here real quick. Okay, and then same thing as before, but instead of, you know, turning these around and lining them up, I'm just going to just as I peeled them off the uh, biot stem, I'm just going to leave them like that. And then just line these up and play around with the angle a little bit too. You want what I found, what I think looks best, anyways, is you know, the angle just opening them up, opening up here and the wings ending back here and a constant angle all the way through. So. Play around with the angle and get it right for the size hook that you're tying on and all that. 
So all I'm doing is I've got these tips pretty well lined up and I'm just using my thumb and forefinger here to kind of splay them out or bring them back in and just take some time. I mean that's all there is to it. And then once you get an angle that you feel pretty happy with, see how that just starts to open up right where the head is and then goes out throughout the body. I'm just going to lay that down on top and then just like before when we're pinching the back biots, instead of pinching like this I'm just going to take my fat finger here push it down right on top and that'll hold those in pretty darn well. I mean you got to be gentle with them but not nearly as bad as you know, what if you're just trying to put them one at a time or something like that. So I'm pushing down fairly hard, getting a little bit of flex in the hook there. And then a little bit of a clockwise spin with my bobbin. And then loose wrap on top. And then pull off to the side, just like before. And then I'm going to take a few securing wraps and kind of build up that head. And see we got fairly good looking wings. Looks like I might have misaligned those a little bit, but pretty good looking wings there. And then all you'd have to do is come in here and trim off your excess and then clean that up. But I'm gonna show you guys one more time just to make it clear. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to line up the tips. Okay, and then the tips are lined up. And then I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger here to kind of control the angle. And this does take some time. And it is kind of hard. But eventually with a little bit of practice you can get it. And if like what I got here, the it's just not doing it right for me, so I'm just going to come in here, bring these in a little bit closer together. There we go. So I've got the angle that I want. I come in top, set those down right on top, and then push down as hard as I can. Not as hard as I can, but push down fairly hard with my finger and put clockwise twist in my bobbin it came apart a little bit but that's fine let's reset those so I'm using my top finger here as kind of a my pinch and then loose wrap right on top pull off to the side and then securing wraps Okay, just like that. Again, this really does take some time to some time to master and I mean nobody's ever gonna be perfect at it, I don't think. I'm sure somebody out there thinks they are, but there's always ways that they can improve. And I mean this takes quite a bit of practice, so keep at it and I know I will. So, yeah, hope that helps.